everyone! Have you been anxiously awaiting my updated lighting gear tour for 2020? Well, today's your lucky day! Hey, Monique Renee here, pet and people photographer at Silver Paw Studio. And it has been a year since I published my pet photography lighting gear video. And let's do an update for 2020. Little bit of spoiler alert, it hasn't changed. <laughs> Uh, so if you've seen that and you're good to go, that's fine. But what I want to do today is walk you through a little bit. We didn't talk about modifiers last year. We didn't talk about exact uh, models. And we didn't walk through any of the settings and kind of a setup. So what I'd like to do today is really give you a better look at these lights that I use. And also I think what we'll do is we'll do a little test with my puppy here. <laughs> putting on the brakes here. Once I edited this video, I realized it was already at 15 minutes just showing you around the gear. So I have decided to split it into another video that shows me actually using these Flashpoint Flash with that dog doll. So tune into the next video to watch me walk through a very simple lighting setup using everything you see here and that little puppy as a model. Thanks! Uh, we're also going to talk about the, the speed light. So not only these bigger lights, but the speed light that I use. But let's take a little bit of a closer look today, why don't we? All right, let's do this. Come on! Let's take a look at my bigger lights first. Let me grab the other one from the bag. These are the Flashpoint Explorer flashes. They come in this great bag. Ah. Huh? <laughs> and I have two different kinds because I bought them um, two different years. They go on sale at uh, Black Friday here in the States. Uh, so the Explorer 600, this is a TTL R2, and this is uh, the Explorer 600 R2. So the difference is, is that this has a TTL capability and this does not. And TTL means through the lens, and so the light will decide for you how much output it will give. I never use TTL, so it doesn't really matter to me, but since this one was on sale, I thought, what the heck? <laughs> so you might know these as Godox brand, G-O-D-O-X. These are the reasons that I have this particular light. First of all, it's battery operated. So let me um, tighten that so it doesn't keep squishing my fingers. So it has a battery that slides on and off. Here's the release and it slides up and it has a plug. So then all you do is you, doo -doo -doo -doo, you plug this in, it says charge. So plug this in here and plug this into your wall and it'll give you a little indicator of where it's at, the power wise. So you can see here, if this was plugged in, it would light up. But what you can also do, I'm gonna take this off, you can also do, if you're not sure how much battery you have, is you just push this button and it'll give you an indicator lights right here. So one of the big bonuses to that is that you don't have cords in your studio or in someone's home or office, wherever you're photographing them. So having a battery, you don't need a cord which is also super great on location outside. I do take this with me on photo shoots outside. I like to add that little bit of extra light into their eyes. If it's a, uh, I can also do that with my speed light though. So it just adds, if I have a lot of backlight to them or a lot of pretty color, but I need light in their face, I always take this with me in my wagon. Uh, Another huge perk about these particular lights, these Flashpoint Explorers, is that they have uh, HSS, high sync speed, I think is what it's called. So most flashes, traditionally flashes, you could have your shutter speed only at 1 200 or 250th of a second. You don't have to worry about these. 
So if you're outside a bright light, maybe they're moving around a lot, or you just don't want to bother with changing all of your camera settings every time you have to use your flash, you don't have to worry about it. And what's also great is it automatically goes into high sync speed when you're on location. So I don't have to fiddle with it at all. Really love these. It comes with a cover for the actual bulb. Always keep this on if you're transporting. So you click this button down and swivel this. Ta-da! And this is called a Bowens mount. And so I made sure to get that because a lot of your modifiers have what's called a Bowens mount. Uh, so they will click right on here with these three notches. But these lights come with what's called this reflector. And you can see this slot here is for an umbrella, which goes in here, which I'll show you on here. Uh, so make sure that's in the right spot. But we're gonna click this on here, like so. So you push it in and turn it. And then we have this all lined up here. So you can use this just like this. You don't have to have an umbrella. These are high powered enough. You can uh, shoot the light up into the corner of the room and have it come back and that'll really soften it and make a larger light source. Uh, word of warning, you need more power for that. So when I said how great it is to have these battery powered, there is a, a modeling light in here, but it takes a lot more battery. So be really careful. So keep that in mind with these kind of battery powered lights. Another great thing about the flashpoint lights is that the, the receiver is built in to the flash. Uh, sometimes you'll have an extra piece that has to hang off of here. You don't have to worry about it with these flash points. It's built in, but you will need a little transmitter. Now I have this one. There is an updated model now that has a nice LCD screen. This just has this screen. <laughs> Um, it's a little cumbersome to use with the tiny buttons. Uh, so, you know, maybe I'll upgrade and get the one with a nice LCD screen later, but this is such low profile, it throws right into my camera bag. And so I really love this little transmitter. You will notice this says R2, that's the ones that you use with the Flashpoint Explorers, and the little S just means Sony. If you want the Nikon one that'll have an N, the Canon one will have a C. So be watching for that. These are battery powered, so this has two AA batteries. I have rechargeable ones, so I always have an extra set. They last quite a while. Then the other Flashpoint flash that I have, sorry, that's loud, comes in this little case, Zoom R2, and it's a TTL also, although I almost never use the TTL functionality of this. What's really great is that works with this and it, this works with this and it works with this. I really love that. I only need to have one of these instead of two different ones. This one is awesome to go to the shelters with. I put it on its little foot and set it up on a windowsill or a top of a bank of cages or a table anywhere and I can just bounce this all over the place and I can control the settings from the little uh, transmitter. Lots of functionality there. This does take four AA batteries. <laughs> uh, so this Zoom R2 flash is the speed light that I use all the time. You could also take this on location. You can see there is a quarter 20 here and that could go on a tripod uh, or you can put a head on here, however you want, any kind of stand. Pretty awesome. All right, other lighting gear considerations. If you don't want to use your flash just as it comes like this, you might need things called modifiers. Uh, but each type of modifier you get, like a softbox or an umbrella, grids, and this is really all we're talking about is something like this. And that's what this is. This is my second one. And it goes on like an umbrella. Here. And then you can see how this part goes around the light. 
Uh, you have to use this in this orientation. It's not shoot through, it's to come back out. Um, I got these because they were very inexpensive. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description. They're very inexpensive, they fold down. If I take them on location and they fall over, I've broken so many umbrellas that way, uh, then it's fine. <laughs> I can just go out and replace it. So you can also use these modifiers with your speed light if you have one of these little adapters. I'll link this in the description too because I never know what to type in to find this again. Um, so you put one of these on the bottom of your speed light there, right? And then the post goes into, into one of these spots and you tighten it down. And then the other side goes on your light stand. And then there's a little spot right here that the umbrella goes through. And so you can use these with an umbrella and your speed light as well. Another modifier I have that I just love is this. All right, this is my Glow Parapop. Uh, what is awesome about this is using it on location because it just clicks into place in, and this is one of those Bowens mount again. So click, click, click. And this is a 28 inch. All right. This is nice because it's smaller. So even just in a light breeze, it won't fall over as easily, um, but it has this nice deep. So it's gonna really make sure the light goes exactly where you want it to go. Where with these umbrellas, the light's gonna go way up here a lot more. This concentrated right on your subject. Again, if you're outside, this is great. You can light up just the dog and none of the background is going to be affected release all of these it's loud so let's see if I can make it work you push these two buttons together Boom on the floor here Boom. there we go folds right up and goes right into its carrying bag one of the difficulties of this is that I think this mount is meant to use several different modifiers on so these pins tend to come out if you're not real careful when you take it in and out of the bag. And then you have to put all of these little pins back in there. So I'm always very careful when I put this back in and out of the bag. So do note that. Okay, what else do I have? Uh, the last thing is my five in one. Ah, this is my reflector. If you don't have any other lights, just get one of these. <laughs> A five in one just means there's five different surfaces. We got our gold side, we have our silver side, and then it comes apart and you have a light side, a super golden side, and a scrim. If you want the light to go through it, uh, you can use that. I use this thing all the time. This handle's great that you can hang it off of things, which I do a lot. So if I'm just using this, I'm gonna hang this off of a light stand. I don't, you can't, I don't know how anyone would live without <laughs> a reflector. Here's, here's the trick to folding these back up. Put your hands opposite. This hand's over, under, this hand's over, okay? And then you twist opposite directions. Uh, there you go. So you got this, this hand's over, under, <laughs> this hand's under, this hand's over, twist, and put it back together. And that's how you do that. Yeah, you're welcome. I lost the bag to this a long time ago. Uh, so I just have to carefully slip it back into another bag. The only thing I didn't mention is the light stands. Let me show you that. Uh, these stands I added last year and honestly, I don't love them. <laughs> it has these spring mounted and they don't seem to stay in place. So I need to adjust it somehow or just get new ones. And now that I have this studio space, they don't get quite low enough for me. So I have a dog all the way on the ground. I want the light lower. Um, so I'm in the market <laughs> to buy some shorter light stands. But this is what you're gonna need. Something that squeezes up like this and is nice and sturdy for these heavy lights. And that will adjust up and down. And it has this particular head on the top. Uh, the one last thing I want to show you is uh, you need a weight on the bottom if you're on location. I do in the studio too just because big dogs, right? So they might run into this light and you want a weight. You can get weight specific. These came with some. 
Uh, but I actually have these doggy backpacks and I bought these from a friend of mine when I was getting some other gear and they just have bags of rice inside and they work great. I think that's all the gear. I have pretty simple lighting gear and let's do just like a little test. Let's use our doggy and I'll show you a little bit of how I would set that up, okay? And this is where the lighting gear 2020 video ends. I went on to film using the lights with my very cooperative little puppy doll and showing you using the camera, the transmitter, and the flash all together. And you can see the reflector off to the side. So tune in next week for that part of the episode. We're already past 15 minutes on this video and I didn't want to go on and on. So let's make that a whole separate video. So tune in next time as we photograph this little puppy with all of this gear. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to paw that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss next week's episode, of course. And as always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.